Hey everyone, we're live from Facebook headquarters today, uh, and I was thinking about starting something new, which is uh, going around and talking to some engineers at Facebook about some of the work that they're doing to help connect everyone in the world. Uh, so today, uh, we are here with an engineer on our AI and accessibility team, Matt. Uh, how's it going? Good, Mark, how are you doing? Um, I'm good. So I'm really excited to talk about the work that you're doing uh, with AI to make it so that blind people can help experience photos. And um, you know, for those of you guys who are watching, uh, Matt is a really special guy. Um, he's, he's not only um, a, an excellent engineer who um, happens to be uh, blind himself, but he's also um, an accomplished athlete and musician. Uh, so you want to tell us a little bit about your background and the work that you're doing here before we, we get started talking about AI? Yeah, sure. Um, so I joined Facebook uh, last June, and uh, I came here from IBM. I was there for about 25 years, and uh, yeah, like I said, I, I spent some time on the bicycle racing tandems, competed in the uh, Atlanta, Sydney, and Athens Paralympic Games, and uh, had a second major in uh, pipe organ performance along with electrical engineering. <laughs> That's and what classical I did piano. Yeah, so I, now I don't uh, have ready access to pipe organs anymore, but I do have a piano. All right. So do you want to take us through um, some of the work that you're doing here? Sure. Actually, before, before we jump into that, maybe it's useful to talk about just how uh, big of an opportunity this is to improve people's lives around the world. Because I think that one thing that a lot of uh, people may not know is that there are about 250 million people around the world who are blind or um, are legally blind, which means that you have vision which it's not possible to correct um, to, to a, a, a good degree. Um, there are also about 360 million people um, who are deaf or uh, I guess legally deaf or have um, really significantly impaired hearing. So if you add just those two um, groups of people together, that's bigger than the whole population of the United States, uh, or the whole population of the European Union, uh, or the whole population of South America. So, you know, when we're talking about connecting every person in the world, you can't really do that if you don't give every person equal access to information. And that's really what we're talking about doing here, is making it so people who can't see, uh, we can show them uh, the context and information from their friends in different ways by, by reading it to them. Um, or if you can't hear, uh, to be able to read what's in a video so that way we can show the text in, um, in a caption. So uh, with, with that kind of, with that introduction, let's, um, let's get into some of the work that we're doing here. All right, so I am on the accessibility engineering team. And yeah, it's our primary objective to equip all of our teams in Facebook with the abilities they need to design and deliver experiences that are enjoyable for everyone, you know, as you say, whether or not you can see, whether or not you can hear, whether or not you can use your hands or even have hands at all, okay? And so um, what we're doing now with this uh, AI is um, using object recognition or machine vision, computer vision, uh, in order to uh, look at photos for people who are blind. and. I think to make it real for people, let's just do one quick little demo and then I'll talk a little bit more about what this demo means in terms of uh, how it benefits people who are blind. So we're going to use a computer exactly the way I do for a minute. So the screen is black and I'm going to use the keyboard to read through uh, a story from a Facebook newsfeed. This is actually a web page where we pulled some public content out of my personal news feed and put it into this demo page for automatic alt text. So the first thing it's going to tell us is who posted the story. Heading level five, link, Clara Valentine. So it said it was a heading, uh, that it was a link. Now that's because it's the beginning of a story and if you click on Clara's name, it'll take you to her profile. So Clara posted the photo. Link, February 26th. And she did it on February 26th. Now the next thing we're going to hear is Button. what Clara wrote about the photo. Sunday night splurge. Sunday night splurge. So that's <laughs> that's pretty typical, like you know, what people say about photos. Not a whole lot. 
And before that, um, before we had automatic alt text, this would just say Clara's photo. So this would be kind of a throwaway story for me. I would just sort of move on to the next thing in feed. Now, with automatic alt text. Link, image, image may contain colon, pizza. So I found out that she shared a picture of pizza. And screen curtained off. If we look at the screen, you know, we got a pizza, right? So that might seem um, pretty trivial to some people. And, you know, just adding a single word to this story. But what's most important here is not that single word, but actually how that word got there. It's a result of the, um, the computer machine learning uh, that capabilities provided by our AI team. And what this means to me uh, right now as somebody who works in the field of accessibility, in the 30 years that I've been blind, there have been lots and lots of improvements. Most of them, they make life better for people who are blind, but incrementally so. Every now and then, like maybe once every 10 years, we get something new and game-changing that just opens new doors that, you know, vastly new possibilities. And uh, that's what I see this is. This, this single word, pizza, is actually like a baby step taken by somebody who's going to change the world. Think of it like as Abraham Lincoln's first step as a child or Gandhi's first step as a child, right? I mean, that's, to me, that's what this is. So let's talk for a second about what went into the AI that was able to look at this photo and tell you that it was a pizza. Do you want to explain that? Yeah, well, the first thing that we had to do, notice that this pizza has uh, pepperoni and olives, right? And part of the design decision here was when was it good enough, like when did we get enough uh, information out of the machine learning to provide something useful? And that's balancing what we call precision and recall, right? So, in this particular case, the pepperoni and olives, while they may have been recognized, uh, it got filtered out um, because we weren't absolutely confident that, or I shouldn't say that. We didn't have a high enough level of precision to be mm -hmm. confident that we want to include that information in the description. And so at this point in time, uh, a big part of what we're doing to uh, make automatic alt text work well is make sure that we're balancing precision and recall in a way that gives people enough information for it to be useful, but also gives uh, them uh, or prevents us from making mistakes that will, yeah. so they will not begin to ignore the automatic alt text because they don't trust yeah. it, right? And this is the result of a lot of the new research that we're doing in deep learning neural networks um, on our AI research team. Uh, one thing that I want to call out, because this is a live video, uh, you know, anyone who's watching this can ask a question for me or, and Matt, and, and we'll try to jump in on um, and explain what's going on here. You know, one thing that, that I think a lot of people might have missed is um, you're using a screen reader to read um, what's what's on the screen and you know I bet most of the people who are watching this um, have never seen that before so do you want to talk for a second about what that is and, and how that enables blind people to um, to to read the context on the screen sure the, the screen reader is reading text on the screen but as you saw it's reading a lot more than just the text on the screen the way that uh, works is we have code in our web pages that essentially describes what the text on the page means. That code is interpreted by the browser, which then is uh, builds what's called an accessibility layer into uh, the operating system through the accessibility APIs. And that information is then extracted by the screen reader and presented in a way that a person can understand. So I can operate this reading cursor on the screen 
with the keyboard, and it will give me information that helps me understand what's on the web page. And if I if I go to the next story, since they all start with a heading uh, heading level five, I can just press the five key. Heading level five link. Clara Valentine. And I'm on the next story. And link February twenty sixth. I press the key to go to the next item, the r right arrow key. Button. Link. Celebrations. And it tells me there's the tag, celebrations. It tells me it's a link. Happy it's Thursday. Here, this case she wrote, happy it's Thursday, right? And you can see. Link. Image. Image may contain colon. Three people smiling outdoor. It tells me there's three people. They're smiling. I like that. And that they're outdoors. Uh, which, in this particular case, it gave me a lot of information about um, the context of the photo. It's a lot better than Lara's photo. Well, but this is also a good example of how, even though this is a good start, it's um, it's really basic, right? I mean, it can tell you that there are three people and that they're smiling, and that's great, but so far it isn't also telling you who's in them, right? Which, yeah. um, which a person who could see the photo could probably tell if those were their friends. Yeah. So this is a good reminder that even though this is um, such a big step forward, like you said, um, it's really only about, it's like 1% done, right, compared to what it will be in the future. Um, once we're actually able to uh, determine more of the details the, of what's going on, tell you who's in the photo. And we have probably at, at Facebook the best face recognition system in the world. So there are, there are more details to work out in order to make sure that we're really confident about what we're telling you um, to make sure that it's always right. So let's go to the thread for a second. Uh, Joe asked this question about whether we can take this AI uh, and build it into a camera um, on a phone so that way a blind person can use their phone to just look around and have it uh, tell them what's going on in the world. So what do you think about that as a future direction for the technology? Uh, that is exactly one of the things that we have in mind so that, you know, blind people we have found they enjoy photos as much as anybody else, and they don't just like uh, knowing, uh, like seeing what other people produce, right? They want to share too. Like when I'm traveling, and if I'm not with my family, they can all see, right? My wife and kids would love to see photos that I take of where I am, but you know, it's really hard for me to do that if I don't know what's in the frame. Right? So I yeah. would love to show that kind of information. So how long do you think it's going to take before we get there? See, this is the trick. You're, you're never really yeah. supposed to put engineers on the spot about about <laughs> the, the amount of time it's going to take to do something. So that's an unfair question to ask uh, while we're live with you know 100,000 people watching us. Um, but you know, hopefully, hopefully in the next you know year or so, we'll um, we'll be able to have more of this functionality rolled out, um, not just in in mobile cameras, but um, you know, add more features into what we can tell you about what the photos are, uh, add it to more of our apps like Instagram. Um, it's, um, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming on now. So here, here's a couple more questions from the first. So Sriram has asked, don't you think the AI talks too fast and not with a clear voice? So he's asking about the screen reader. Uh, um, yeah. And you, you were talking to me about this um, when, when you first showed me the screen reader. Um, so um, um, I think folks would, would benefit from um, from hearing uh, why it goes so fast. Uh, right. Well, um, I have it really slowed down. If you wanted to see how I really work, <laughs> I would double the speed at least here, and that's how I can actually get something done. I can never get anything done if I am <laughs> running this slow all the time. But um, yeah, so that's not the AI. You're right. That's the screen reader that's doing the talking, and I have total control over the speed of the screen reader. And um, in fact, I can adjust, adjust it on the fly anytime I want. So you can make it 2x, 3x, 4x oh, yeah. normal speaking speed. Right. And that helps you. I mean, since this is the primary way that you're looking at content on the screen, you're, you're really tuned to this. So for right. us watching this for the first time, it feels like it's really fast. But for Matt, it's actually really slow, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, so Trey has a question on the thread of what sort of hardware uh, does this AI need to run on? Mm, that's a good question. It's probably a better question for the AI team I can you know, take in that. terms of what's in the back end. Okay. Well, so one of the important things is that there's the phone uh, that, that you're experiencing it on, and then there are servers uh, in a Facebook data center somewhere uh, around the world that are actually doing the computation. So what we're going to do you know, when we're building it into um, into an app that's on your phone, right? So this is already rolled out on iPhone and iOS. 
and we're going to roll it out on Android, I think, sometime this week. Yes. Um, and then, you know, eventually when we get to the vision of, of having this rolled out in, you know, the mobile camera, so that way a blind person can just point it around and, and have it read to them what's going on, that computation isn't actually all going to happen on the phone. It's going to take um, a segment of the image, um, send it back up to um, to our, our servers really quickly, and then you know within a second, um, our, our servers and our data centers will compute uh, what's what's in the photo, uh, and then send that data back, and it'll be read aloud from the phone. So you know the, the the trick is is that it actually doesn't require a whole lot of computational power on your device in order to be able to run. All right. Um, so here's a question that I think is interesting, um, and then we should after this one we should get to uh, one of your future projects that you're working on here. So Parth uh, from the thread is asked, how does a visually challenged uh, person like you uh, contribute as an engineer at Facebook? And how do you overcome the challenges of not being able to see uh, the product that you're building? I think that's a pretty fair question. Um, but the answer is amazingly simple. I actually work in the same way that almost everybody else works. So. If I'm working on code, I literally read the code with the screen reader exactly uh, the same way I'm reading this story here, and I can read through by, uh, by line, by unit, by character, and so forth, and uh, I can type on the keyboard as, as fast and easily as anybody else. I was really lucky. My mom taught me how to type when I was in the second grade, um, before I lost most of my vision. So that was you know, pretty good. I was touch typist as a young kid. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's amazingly simple when it gets right down to it. My life is almost the same as anybody else's. And one important thing that we really try to stress at Facebook is you need to experience how uh, people use your product in order to build for them. So, you know, in addition to accessibility, and you know, I mentioned earlier that there are almost 250 million people around the world who are blind um, or legally blind, and you know, a lot of people don't know what that's like, and actually building that product, um, I, I think, actually helps you uh, build tools that are going to serve those those folks. Um, but we do this all over, right? So we do this with connectivity for people who are on um, networks that are slower or less reliable around the world. A lot of people are on 2G um, networks and not 3G or 4G networks. Um, so we actually do a lot of work at Facebook to build tools to simulate um, what those conditions are like, so that way, uh, when our engineers here are building, um, we can feel the way that people are actually going to use the product. So before we break today, do you want to show this um, this last project that you're working on? Yeah, I'm really excited about this because um, there are a lot of people who can um, see photos a little bit, but it's really hard for, like, so they might have some idea of what's in a picture, but, um, for example, not be able to make out which person is which in a in a photo, um, or there's people who are blind. We give them a picture that uh, says something like, you know, three people outdoor, smiling, but you, you can't really uh, give all the information about the photo in a short description. So what our idea here is that you'd be able to touch the photo, and umbrella one, and it would tell you what's under your finger as you move umbrella around. Umbrella one, Let's see. umbrella one, chair one. Let's see. Um, um, umbre umbrella one. Let's see. Chair six. Oh, there we go. So in this particular photo, if I would have the automatic alt text before I started um, going through this, and it would have told me how many chairs are in the photo, how many umbrellas are in the photo, and so forth, then I'd be able to find out the arrangement. Or if there were multiple people, I'd be able to see how, um, you know, how they are standing or sitting in the photo, and so forth. This is just very, very uh, beginning crude prototype. So right now, it doesn't tell us anything at all about the background, like the the sky or the water or the sand. Um, it's only telling us about objects. But just the idea here is, um, to me, really exciting. Yeah. This is. Uh, I think that this is going to be awesome. Um, coupled with the technology that you're already yeah. building to be able to give a, a rough explanation of what's in the photo and then um, giving people the ability to explore it is going to be great. And I think that this demonstrates both how big of a step forward AI can be uh, for improving the experience for people who are visually uh, impaired or, or deaf around the world, um, 
but it also shows just how close to the beginning we are, right? And and you know some of these tools yeah. are, um, you know, they can already create such a different experience, but you can see such a clear path to making it better and better, and that's a lot of what makes me really excited about using artificial intelligence um, to help in our mission to connect every person in the world and give every person in the world equal access to information. So we're going to sign off here, uh, but thank you for taking the time to sit down with us today. Uh, the work that you're doing is amazing, uh, and I'm really excited to see more people in the world use it. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it.